try to make something better every single time we go out. We're talking about Billy Woods hiding places. And right off the bat, I'm going to say Billy Woods is one of the smartest rappers in the game. Like as far as intelligence, raw intelligence, someone who just packs a bunch of meaning and just thought provoking type of wordplay in their bars. I don't think anyone is above Billy Woods in the game right now. Um, this album was produced by Kenny Seagal, who uh, I really liked the production throughout, so nothing bad to say about the production. Really, really cool. I made some notes about that throughout, and I'm just going to break this one down song by song and just really highlight Billy's just raw intelligence and how that kind of went into making Hiding Places just a special album. And uh, just to talk about what my first impression of the album is the art that came along with it. And the art was absolutely just like that picture of the house just lets you know that it's going to be some deep ass dark album. But what he delivers really is a lot of thought provoking um, next level type of poetry and just wordplay. And just the metaphors he uses are on another level. So the first track is called Spongebob, which is a funny... Um, uh, funny title. I think that is his most popular um, as far as views on YouTube. So that name definitely got some attention. And I love the deep dark chords that just like intro this album and uh, the understated drums. That's kind of a theme throughout. Just really good drum work. Really good uh, like whether it be bass lines or synth or like some modulated voice sample that was just pitched lowered way down. I really liked the like deep melancholic chords throughout this album and uh billy's pensive energy is just uh apparent right off the bat all of his verses are just stressed in his unique like urgent flow and it just creates an atmosphere of dread um this first song uh it's kind of hard to overanalyze the intro you're just i'm kind of just getting his feel for his energy and his like what this is going to be about and it seems like it's about disposing bodies and hiding things and coming to terms with god and the afterlife he's talking about like what do you think i need this for in the afterlife stupid and um there's like a bank line at the end saying like you only have ten dollars left in the bank like you called the teller and uh, this is kind of a cool outro so right off the bat it's like, all right, this guy's like talking about disposing bodies. He's like super clever and pensive and just like brooding. And it's just like this dark atmosphere. Then we go into Steak Knives, which just has this like crazy vocal sample that just starts it off like a throat singing sample that they've just modulated to go along with this super boom bappy kind of weird uh, synthy song. And uh, it's just an explosive like beat. And his flow coming in is already different. It's frantic. Um, just some cool lines about like... It's kind of a theme in Billy Woods' work. He has this like wistful... Um, unromantic but romantic view of women. Kind of like dark. Like he ha he's had his heart broken really bad or something. Or has had a hard strange relationship with his mother. One of the lines in this song was... Uh, Don't pretend we back in love. I'm just trying to get dug. Like a woman coming back and talking to him. And um, yeah, this, this vibe is present throughout his music. Um, another line I really liked on this song, a bum is what you call an old thug. He kind of has this like very real street, uh, like mercilessly unbiased view of all these things. And um, he's saying he's dangerous because his name is clean and like other people's like names are dirty. Like he's like, you have a checkered past, but mine is spotless. I can shoot you and then um, be home for breakfast, like, four names, two aliases, and all of them are mud, so he's like, I could just kill you and no one will care, and I can get away with it because my name is clean, and this is pretty true, if you're a criminal and no one knows, but I'm not trying to give any unsolicited advice, but, like, in my own case, when I had, like, been on no, it's a lot easier to operate if no one knows who you are and you have a perfectly spotless and clean past, you can almost be more dangerous once you start like people telling on you and like you telling on yourself to people that's when um you become considerably less dangerous and like that's kind of how criminals will tend to reach out when they're trying to get out of deep water 
is they tell on themselves to almost get out of having to act in these crazy ultimatums that they've set up for themselves. And I feel like that's a cool way of putting it in this song. Like he's like, I am spotless. I can just take you out. And like I said, that first song seemed to be about like disposing of bodies in some weird way. So the album's getting pretty crazy. And by the third song, Checkpoints, it just has this crazy experimental beat. It's almost like this EDM style of like bass and sub and um, he references Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in this one and the song is almost like set like it's in space and uh, he has this like nihilist philosophy like talking about um, whatever to get you from one day to the next mine is being the greatest but he's talking about other people like they just beat their dick and um, like or read your bible while the dread's dripping off, sweat is dripping off your lip FBI listening to Dr. King like he's into some freaky shit. So it's kind of this like nihilist um, view on like passing time and trying to put things in the scope of the universe. And then we get into this like crazy apocalypse now like Vietnam track Spider Hole. And um, in this song I think he's talking about narratives. Like propaganda. And this is something a lot of people don't really understand the true meaning of propaganda of like setting up or taking down institutions and certain um, ideologies and views are really just geared towards the ends of certain people's means and uh, this is talking about like the narrative of like the elites trying to um, put things on really all kinds of stuff like he starts it off like uh, they're talking about Benghazi before they even got a copy like how the Republican Party was almost setting up that witch hunt for Hillary Clinton before the news of the attack had even broke, like it was almost a false flag setup kind of thing, or they knew it was going to happen, so they had already prepared a trial before the information was even present. It's like a bunch of propaganda, and um, kind of, it's like the patronizing propaganda towards black people that is on both sides. Like, he's talking about like National Geographic looking at crack addicts, anthropologists like on the corner taking notes about drug dealers and stuff. And, um, like, $4 million over mud huts, like, airplanes and stuff. Just the insanity of, um, that remove, that patronizing, like, removal. And, um, the narrative around that and how, uh, just really, like, highlighting racism. One of the lines that really stuck out to me was, I don't want to see Nas perform with an orchestra at Carnegie Hall. That was pretty interesting. I'm, I kind of understand it because Nas was originally representing like the crack struggle and Queensbridge and all of that and uh, to see him come at this level and get his praise so far removed from what he originally was representing it's almost weird to see a crowd full of like white folk clap for a performance when they would still like to see people like Nas talking about exactly what they're clapping for put in prison for life for doing those same things not understanding like the humanity behind it so I can understand what Billy Woods is getting there it's like what's the point of honoring these people if there wasn't the change that was intended behind their art in the first place it's like it's really weird to see and the end verse goes really hard he's talking about literally being in the spider hole and like you just gotta listen to it it builds so well that's a really good track is spider hole and this really starts to highlight Billy's unique ability to create like a paradigm to really highlight certain things like racism in a way that people might, it might broaden their perspective. I don't know how to pronounce this song, but it's like Houthi. And I love the flute samples throughout this. I don't know if that's a reference to the instrument or anything. I didn't do much back research for this. And... Um, he seems to be tired of living in like a materialistic society on this. He's talking about like how it requires like intensity to break from that. And I think that's what he's referencing. Like how he's talking about being in the Porsche lights. It takes the intensity of a knife to cut through that. And um, the second verse references a lot of classic literature like Salinger and some other people and some other references. And I think it's kind of um, a reference to his life and maybe he had to move quickly one day. Um, yeah, this seems like it's something related to his actual life. I do know his background is, his, he's from uh, the United States, but his, his, both of his parents, I think, are immigrants. 
His mother was an English teacher and his father was some type of um, Marxist and revolutionary in their country of Zimbabwe. And I can't act like I know anything about their situation, but I think that must have played a part in uh, Billy's development, at least. I know in uh, the rapper M.I.A. has had a similar background. And uh, I only know that because she's opened that up more in her like documentary side of her life. And that does have a unique impact on impact on how you see these uh, events and how they really do impact real families and people. And the reason I set Boards of Canada out is some of the production really does have like hints of that magic captured in like certain EDM groups like Boards of Canada. But that production is layered into a rap album, so I think that's really something special. On to A Day in a Week, and this is one of the more beautiful songs. The singing really hits, and it just has these wonderful harpy synth sounds, and it's just kind of refreshing point in the album. And like I said, it just has this like wonderful Boards of Canada vibe. And this, he seems to be accepting the fragility of life, and uh, I really like his flow on this. He has like Earl vibes. Um, he's talking about like addicts will have tears but in the end they'll hit the pipe again that's a really uh, poignant line every Billy line has meaning and that's something that's just throughout this album like it's hard to pull certain lines out and talk about it because every song just has this like decisive essence and every line just has meaning like he's talking about fucking with the joystick pretending I was really playing like how certain things in life he just felt like it was out of his control and the next song, Bedtime, this intro is built really well. It's just a super good, dope crescendo in the intro with the bass. And it's a very interesting song about, like, it's talking about children and what they do when they're not being watched and how, like, society has to rebuild, I think, after disasters. And he's talking about ghosts and how the men hide behind the curtains with guns, just all kinds of uh, just really horrific images. Like, if you think about it in the context of maybe, like, a coup d'etat, or a revolution this is like a haunting song and um next song crawl space i didn't really like the elusive verse um i feel like he's really grown over time but i liked the billy verse on this uh whose way is strange when it's time to survive is kind of how he opens his verse and from there just keeps building he seems to be talking about like his apprehension with the music industry and working with certain executives that he know are overtly racist and all kinds of different other things like for all we know if billy woods would have just done what he was told they could just straight steal his poetry and sell it to some white rapper like not even not even fronting and then we go into um speak gently it has this like hard 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 guitar beat and it's kind of hard to hear billy but maybe that's the point because he's talking about like speaking gently and uh being balls deep in the land of gentry that's kind of funny so um this is kind of about being in an, i think speak gently is a reference to like walking on eggshells in an area that's being gentrified and how things can change then we go into toothy and this is like a nice choppy violin i think his uh the benny seagal kenny seagal likes to start with like a one count and that's like a nice little touch to every beat it just has this like nice choppy feel to the intro of every song and I like that style, it's classic. Um, he's talking about like Robin season, like wearing a mask on Halloween, make sure it's tight on Christmas time. If, you're, if Halloween is Christmas. And it's like this weird little red riding hood metaphor comparing grandma to the, to the wolf for snitching. And it's like a nice hook about like how the old like white folks kind of, or just old people in general are like brainwashed in society and they contribute to the police state. Um, I get why you don't want to believe the water gets deep, also a reference to people who are like asleep and um, contributing to their own oppression by voting conservative or whatever. Or really just, you're really set up to fail on both sides because both sides are kind of extreme and negative in many ways. But a Big Fake Laugh is the next song talking about insurance and kind of comparing that or equating it to slavery. Um, starts off talking about segregation, so really all I can say is the song is on point. He's not really equating insurance to slavery. He's more just having bars about both of those subjects, and he starts it with segregation. So really not much to say. You just kind of got to listen to it. It's a really good song. doesn't really stand out from the rest, but it also fits nicely in the context of the album. 
And then we get to Red Dust. And I think the ending of this is really, really powerful. I mean, he starts off talking about shooting down planes and uh, retrieving the black box, which is just some diabolical shit. This is like the step farther than Pablo Escobar. And it's like some revolutionary shit too, like just the idea of like shooting down a plane and making sure you get the black box, like the extra step. And like, that's another theme of this album is just Billy minding his P's and Q's and like really being um, cold and calculating with his evil because that's how it really is. Like, cause he's calling out bankers. He's calling out like all the real, real evil people in society. And uh, this is just a really strong song. Knock the plane out the sky, spark the genocide, make sure you get the black box. Another line that really stood out on this was um, white boys take what they want and just flip it, flip it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much um, how it feels nowadays with artists like Jack Harlow. And everybody has to kind of base themselves off of certain artists. But uh, when things are really derivative, you really don't want to see like another white guy just come in and cop a style and flip things and just like build off of that. So with my music, I'm really making sure I'm doing something different and that I'm inspired by the... Um, layers that Billy puts in like if I can take anything out of Billy's music it would be the layers and just really naming names and getting into the meat of things because I feel like he doesn't waste time and in getting into the real root of subjects and like he doesn't care if you understand it or not he's gonna name these names and really talk some poetic shit about the state of society I feel like he's really Earl inspired I get a lot of Earl vibes from him but otherwise, he's just a really unique, really intelligent rapper who's just really calling out these paradigms, really laying things out. Like the thing about passing time and like just talk, like contextualizing, like masturbation, reading the Bible, and spying on Dr. King or being the greatest. Like at least in those four categories, I want to be one of the people trying to be the greatest. And I think Billy really inspires me in that regard. Red Dust is just a really, really strong ending. I would definitely, if you listen to any of the songs, I would start with that one. He has this really, really awful line about, I broke bread with killers and rapists, people you wouldn't want to leave your child with for two fucking seconds. And that's true. Like, a lot of people don't realize if you start involving yourself in crimes, especially gangs and, like, big city organizations, it's going to be involved with human trafficking. It's going to be involved with a lot of awful things. So I think Billy really doesn't shy away from highlighting the evil in a lot of these things. And um, he really doesn't shy away from calling out like just the things that make him feel uncomfortable. And I think he's really good at setting up these metaphors, these situations, and just calling people out and just raising the bar on everybody with just intelligent, unique perspective and flows. And I just can't wait for any Billy Woods project that comes out. Atheops was a really strong album this year. But um, I just wanted to review Hiding Places because I think this has a lot of special meaning and um, really established Billy Woods is just a... Le obviously, there's, he has a lot of good albums even before this, but it just established him as a legendary MC, at least in my opinion, because um, just really good, real bars. So yeah, that's my review of Hiding Places. Definitely check out Red Dust, but I recommend the whole album. And I do stand by that Billy Woods is probably one of the most intelligent rappers in the game.